Hello everyone and welcome to the Lathrom channel. In our videos we cover filming tips, tricks and techniques, equipment and product reviews, and many other things that will help you in the world of filmmaking and photography. Check out our videos and don't forget to subscribe. What's up everybody? Welcome to the Lathrom channel. My name is Matt. Thank you for tuning in as always, and today we're going to be doing another uh, Final Cut Pro 10 or Final Cut Pro X mini tutorial, and this is actually covering stable, you know, video stabilization. Now there are other programs out on the market that do the same thing. You, know, you may have access to them, like Adobe After Effects. You may not. You may also not have you know Adobe Premiere because I believe they also put the warp stabilizer warp stabilizer feature inside of Premiere as well with the Creative Cloud revisions. Either way, say you're stuck using Final Cut Pro and you've never used it before and you need a little bit of help, it's really quite simple. So as you can see here, we have a 40 some odd second clip, uh, 42.29 second clip. And it's actually pretty simple, pretty easy. As you can see, I mean, it, yeah, the filming with the drone was not too bad. It was pretty stable, but since we ramped up the speed from a five minute video clip down to about 42 seconds, you, know, you could still see a lot of the motion going on here. So we need to rectify that a little bit. In your uh, video pane over here on the upper right hand side, you will actually see something that says stabilization. Go ahead and click on that bad boy, and we're also going to click tripod mode because we want to lock it down. Now, if you click on this little gauge right here, it'll show you the background tasks. Now, we're actually doing a few different things at the moment. We're transcoding, we're also importing, and we're doing a background render all at the same time, which, as you could kind of see, I mean... I'm down to roughly about 8 gigs of RAM out of 16, and eh, we're actually starting to cool down. We were up around 200 degrees Fahrenheit. Hey, it happens. It's a MacBook Pro. I mean, it's not very big, and the cooling is not you know, anything like, you know, a, oh, I don't know, desktop PC. All right, now, as you can see, if we kind of, uh, you know, just scrub through this, it has taken out a lot of that, here I'll actually play it. It's taken out a lot of that uh, bobble and the weave from the wind pushing that phantom around and it gives you a nice steady locked on video. It literally looks like we took a crane dolly or, or jib dolly or a crane or something like that, attached a tripod to it and put a camera on it which is exactly what I was technically looking for if you do not want something that is that still, if you still want some movement but you don't want as much movement, that's fine. You can actually turn the tripod or tripod mode off. And uh, let's see here. You can actually play with some of these settings. Right now, the method is set to automatic. You can actually turn that to an inertia cam or a smooth cam. So for this example, we're just going to do a smooth cam. As you can see, it's analyzing for dominant motion. If we click on that gauge, bring that down, you can see that we're about 14% into you know, a dominant motion uh, analysis. So it's actually seeing how much movement you have going on in the video. Obviously, shorter videos have a lot less uh, analysis time involved than longer ones. So if you really need, how would I put this? If you really need to stabilize a lot, stabilize a lot of hand footage or handheld footage, you may want to break it down into clips, do it individually, or set it up to where you do it at night, walk away from it and let it go all night or for a couple hours or however long it takes, depending on how long your video is. As you can see, I mean, the 40 second, or 42 second clip is not actually that strenuous. But we are almost done. And I can get rid of that. Now, as you can see, I mean, it's still not bad. You can still tell that it's moving a little bit here and there, but it's very, very subtle. It kind of gives you that nice, uh, basically kind of like... Uh, 
I'd have to say kind of like combining a motorized gimbal and a steady cam. But that's about all, I mean, you could play with the set, and I'm not going to sit here and actually tell you what all the settings and, you know, tell you all the values that you should use and all this. Play with it. That's the easiest way, you know, I kind of give you the rundown. Go ahead and play with it. See what, you know, each thing does. You'll learn a lot quicker and a lot better that way. If you have any questions, concerns, comments, feel free to drop them in the comment box below. If you found this informative, if this video helped you at all, please, by all means, give this video a thumbs up. If you go to give it a thumbs down, use the comment section. Tell us what you don't like. Tell us what we need to change. At least give us some direction on what we should be doing. As always, do not forget to like, share, and subscribe. And until next time, I will see you guys later.